All right, folks, if you came looking for help for the salt marsh food web, you came to the right spot. All right, so here it is. You got your food web down here at the bottom, all the organisms from your top level consumer or heterotroph and your autotrophs or producers down here at the bottom, the plants and the algae. All right, so here we go. Now, remember, you don't need to do this. So let's go ahead and do that. But you do need, you don't, you don't need to circle this like me, but you need this information. This is the information we're going to use to answer these questions. All right, so we're going to start out the saltwater algae and the, and the salt marsh plants. Those are, those are the producers or the autotrophs. So I'm going to go ahead and label those guys, the autotrophs. Uh, text box. Uh, let's go black's fine. All right, so I'm going to put them right here. Put it right in the middle of both of them. These are the autotrophs. Troves slash producers. Because they, they produce their own food. They don't need to eat. They're autotrophs. Put that right there because it's both of them. Then you got to keep going back. I'm going to start with the small crustaceans. What's he eat? The small crustacean, crustaceans eat algae. So I go back down. Here he is, small crustaceans. He eats algae. So I'm going to draw a nice, neat arrow from the algae to the small crustaceans because the algae ends up going into the small crustaceans. All right. Oh, also, let me show you this. This guy, since he's eating a producer, he's a primary consumer. So I'm going to put a number one for primary consumer because he eats producers. Now, if you eat something that eats the producers, you're going to be a secondary consumer. We'll see that in a second. All right, so I did the small crustaceans. Just keep going down the line. So I, I did that one already. Do the grasshopper. He eats marsh plants. All right, so back down we go. Grasshopper, marsh plants. Arrow to the grasshopper. Since he is eating a producer or autotroph, he's a level one or a primary consumer. Boom. All right, keep going. Here we go. Next one. Uh, did the grasshoppers do the rats? Rats eat sparrows, plants, and grasshoppers. Sparrows, plants, and grasshoppers. All right, so the rat. Sparrows, plants. Sorry, so he eats plants. So he does eat plants. Okay. He eats sparrows somehow. I don't know how he catches a bird, but he eats that. And he also eats grasshoppers. Boink, boink. All right, so you can see he eats both plants and animals. So he's a bunch of different level consumers right here. When he eats plants, he's a primary consumer because he's eating plants. But when he eats the grasshopper, the grasshopper is the primary consumer. Since he's eating the grasshopper, all you do is count the, the arrows. One, two. It's so right here. He's a, he's a secondary consumer. And when he eats the sparrow, now it's going to be, well, it's going to be different. And let's just keep it there. But he's going to be a level three, I believe. So, boink, we'll put a three right there. Because I think the grasshopper eats the grass, sparrows eat the grasshopper, and then when a rat eats a sparrow, he's going to be a level three or a tertiary consumer. All right, keep going. Who did the rat? Onto the sparrow. Crustaceans, plants, grasshopper. Crustaceans, plants, grasshopper. All right, so Mr. Sparrow eats grass. He eats grasshoppers. And what else was it? Small crustaceans. Wink. All right. So he's a primary consumer and a secondary consumer. But you know what? Let's call let's do let's do a little something different on this one. Since he eats both plants and animals, we're gonna call him an omnivore. You can, you know, you don't have to put the numbers for all these. You go to say omnivore. Omnivore. That means he eats both plants and animals. That's fine. So if you don't want to keep putting all the numbers. Next guy. All right, so we did sparrow, small fish, crustaceans, marsh plants, algae, small fish, crustaceans, marsh plants, algae. And once again, since he eats both plants and animals, we're going to say he's an omnivore, not an herbivore. Herbivores only eat plants. Carnivores only eat animals. He's an omnivore because he eats both. Let's see who's next. Did the fish. Do the, oh, the duck eats all kinds of stuff. Plants, algae, grasshoppers, crustaceans, small fish. Wow. Okay. 
grasshoppers are going to, okay, I think I remember that. All right, so the duck eats both of the producers or autotrophs. Nice, neat arrows. He also eats crustaceans. Ah, and he eats small fish. All right, so he's both a primary, he's a secondary, and he's also a tertiary consumer. And he's an omnivore. I'm not going to keep typing it. You know, once you show me a couple times, that's good enough. Back up. Uh, the, the duck, owl, sparrows, ducks, rat. All right, the top level consumer eats sparrows, duck, and rat. Just draw an arrow. But notice the owl is not eating any plants. Sparrows, rats, and the duck. Since he's only eating heterotrophs or consumers, animals, he's a carnivore. He's a carnivore. All right, so we got that all filled out. That's it. See, the arrows should look fairly neat. Mine look neat. You can you can see them nice and easy. All right, so here we go back up. Answer some of these questions. What from what organism the food web does the rat get its energy from? You just gotta look at the arrows. The rat gets it from grass, grasshopper, and sparrow. So the rat gets his energy from grass. Grasshoppers and the sparrow. Which organisms de depend directly on the marsh plants for all or part of their diets? There's five of them. All right, let's see. Marsh plants for all or part of their diet. Uh, grasshopper, rat, sparrow, duck, and fish. Let's see if I can remember all that. Grasshopper, rat. Grasshopper, rat, I already forgot, sparrow, small fish, and something else. Small fish, I think it was a duck. All right, give me one second. All right, I'm, all right, I'm back. Somebody was talking to me. Number three, you're not going to know this yet because we haven't gone over it, but you can always Google it. If a non-native species of salt marsh plant were to induce into this food web, what would happen to the native plants? Explain why. You don't have to explain. But the native plants, native plants would most likely go down. So they're going to go down in population because the new plants that are introduced, the non-native, they're not supposed to be there. They have no, pre they have no natural predators. The rats and the grasshoppers would be like, what is this? I mean, I've never seen this plant before. So they're going to keep eating the plants that they usually eat. So the plants they usually eat, they're going to start going down, and, and the, the new plant's going to start to take over. So since that new non-native, that means it doesn't belong there. Like if there was a kangaroo jumping around Tulare, that would be a non-native species. Because how many times have you seen a kangaroo jumping around Tulare? It, it never happens. He's, that would be non-native. So biodiversity would also go down because the native grass all the different grasses would would start to go away and the non-native grass would take over five give specific examples of how each of the organisms would be affected by the loss of salt marsh plants so the crustaceans you can see the crustaceans don't eat salt marsh plants they eat, they eat algae that's it they don't eat it so you, you might think oh they won't be affected at all but you can see that mr duck here does eat the plants same with the sparrow and same with the small uh, the small fish. So since if they don't have salt marsh plants to eat anymore, they're going to start eating more algae. And if they start eating more algae, the crustaceans are going to have less food to eat. So, oh, wrong thing. Back up. So the crustaceans, will they will have less food to eat. Grasshoppers, I think they only eat, oh, wrong thing again. Grasshoppers, I think they only eat grass, right? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be catastrophic. What will happen? They'll either die or find another food source. Sparrows. Mm, sparrows, they eat other things. So they're going to start eating. They'll eat more. Well, the grasshoppers are going to go away. They'll have to eat a ton of crustaceans because obviously there's no grass. There's not going to be any grasshoppers. 
So the sparrows can't eat grasshoppers. They can't eat grass. They're going to start eat. They're going to start destroying the small crustaceans. So the sparrows will have to only eat crustaceans. Mr. Small Fish, what's going to happen to him? All right. So look. So he's going to have to start eating more algae. He's going to have to start eating a lot of algae because obviously the crustaceans are going to start going down. And the grass is gone. So they're gonna the fish are gonna start eating more algae. Eat more algae. Oh, algae. I identified four possible food chains. We're just gonna do the first two. We're not gonna do the bottom ones. I, I hate looking for that one. Uh, the first one only has three levels: one producer, a primary consumer, a secondary consumer. All right, so what's one of those? Uh, we can go grass, grass, grasshopper, sparrow, grass. Producer, grasshopper, primary, sparrow, secondary. So that's one food chain. You can go grass, grasshopper, and sparrow. And this one, we're going to have a, a producer, autotroph, primary consumer, secondary consumer, and tertiary consumer. So let's find one of those. And we can do the same one exa almost exactly. Grass, grasshopper, sparrow, rat. That's where the, the rat is a tertiary consumer it's almost the same thing this food chain grass the producer gets eaten by the grasshopper gets eaten by the sparrow which gets eaten by the rat all right why are saltwater algae considered producers or autotrophs they make their own food using the sun they don't have to eat predict what might happen to the ecosystem if the owls were overhunted by humans uh, if the owls were overhunted, mm, man, it's tough. It's so well. If the owls are overhunted, all these guys are going to go up in population because there's no more owls to eat the rats, the sparrows, the ducks. So now there's going to be a ton of ducks, sparrows, and rats, and they're going to be destroying the grasshoppers and the crustaceans. So these guys would obviously go down. These would go up. And the things they they eat would go down because now it's going to be a million ducks, a million sparrows, and a million rats eating all the grasshoppers, the crustaceans. So let's just, I'm not going to go through all the scenarios. We're just going to put some organisms' population will go up and others will go down. And the last one, which very important consumer is completely missing from this food web? Hint, these organisms help recycle the limited nutrients in the biosphere. Well, these are things when something dies, all that carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, it doesn't just go to waste. We use it again. And that's thanks to decomposers. Because they break down that whatever that dead plant or animal is, and it re returns those nutrients into the biosphere, into the ground, into the air, and we can use it again. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.